Here we go. One second. Excellent. So uh, Meg, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself, share your screen at will. If other people come in, I will let, I will add them to, um, to what we're doing. And if anybody okay. that we don't know who they are in the group starts to act up, I will boot them. So, um, so the floor is yours. Okay, great. So can everyone hear me? I'm talking and it's being heard. It's not great. Now I have a kid trying to come in. Um, I'm Meg Phillips and I prepared a little like just, uh, not slideshow, but just a one slide <laughs> with my name on it. So that's fancy. But it also has the most important part, which is not just my name, but um, also a picture of my family. So I'm a mom, first and foremost. That's the most important thing you need to know about me because it informs everything else that I do. And I can't get my I can't get underneath my little Zoom thing to press the button to present. How do I move around the so yeah. setting in Zoom? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I don't know how to do it either. I usually just uh, grab it and shift it around. So this is my family. And I so I have three children. My husband took this picture, so he's unfortunately not in it. Um, but I have three children, a little girl who will be three pretty soon, an eight-year-old boy and a 12-year-old boy. And we have a golden retriever who is really 13 and a half. And oh. so we're, we're going through a, a transition with Sunny. So that's a little bit of stuff about our family. And you live um, on an island. And I do. And what's cool about this picture is that is not my island. <laughs> so I don't know if you notice how rocky and hilly it is all around there, but we took a really cool vacation this year um, at Christmas time. And this is in, um, oh my gosh, you guys are like up there near here. So then you're going to correct me because now I can't remember. Gloucester, Massachusetts, where Gloucester. the perfect storm how do I say it? Gloucester. Yeah, and I'm from the South. So oh, I know. Gloucester, right? Yes. Gloucester. So my like weekly Southern sailor boys were flabbergasted because the sailing team was practicing and it was like freezing and they're in their dry suits like out there like yeah. full on sailing and my kids were like, uh, yeah, no, we're not sailing. So <laughs> Anyway, we tried to convince them. Uh, we went out to eat and the gal who helped us uh, said that she was on the sailing team there and she was giving our boys all kinds of, of lip because they were um, wimps. So, okay. <laughs> My husband and I volunteer with a community sailing program here on Hatteras Island. I live in North Carolina and we... Uh, launched the com community sailing program just means that it's a not-for-profit that benefits children lo locally in the community so we do a lot with that and it's not like completely selfless like I'm not a saint my kids I want them to succeed in sailing too that's the family business my husband's a captain um, and that's why I write maintain and um, author the plug-in charter boat bookings um, and actually I'm working on a theme or community sailing. So if any of you guys are like gung-ho about learning to write block themes, I'm hosting a co-coding party. The first like get to know you is on Friday at 1 p.m. I think. And we're just gonna talk about what we would like to learn. Cause I, w I have never written a block theme. This will be my first one. So um, the theme that I'm gonna show you guys tonight is a hybrid theme which is really just a fancy way of saying it's not a block theme. I mean, some block themes could be considered hybrid themes, but it's really a classic theme based off of WP Rig that I use the customizer and some other features to enable a full site editing feel to the, to the experience of content editing those sites, but it's actually a classic theme um, written entirely in PHP with just a little bit of JavaScript. So. I'll show you guys how that looks on the sort of user end of that. And then just know that I'm hosting a coding party on Friday to kind of take what I did with that theme and move it into a block theme. So 
there's that. Um, <clears throat> so we'll be looking at that together. And that's my whole slide presentation. So now I'm going to open up. <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing so I can um, open up my browser and actually get into it. And um, I would like to just <clears throat> say that I really appreciate interactivity. So don't feel the need to stay muted and not interrupt me. I would quite like to be interrupted. So um, ask questions as I go along if you have any. And I'm gonna see how I can um, get, oh, not that open. My other Chrome open. So I remember you guys introduced yourselves and kind of um, said a little bit about um, oh, my Chrome, give me a second, my Chrome just quit. A little bit about what you guys um, had done with blocks, but I'd like to ask a specific question and you guys can just holler out all at one time. How many of you guys are using page builders right now? Using with what? With the block editor? Or like, I'd like to just get my head around how many of you are using the block editor and page builder, or we just the block editor Divi without users. a page builder? We a lot, lot of Divi users? A lot of Divi users in the group. I know that there's some Elementor um, and some Cadence mm -hmm. as well. OK. I'm not sure of others. I ask because what you're going to see tonight with my stuff that I'm presenting is uh, fully the block editor without a page builder. So I, I personally haven't used a page builder with the block editor. So I can't I can't show you that because I haven't done it, but you guys can ask questions all along. And I thought one thing that would be neat is um, to sort of show you what you can do without it. And that can give you like kind of a, a brain process of where we are now and maybe where we're going in the future with that. So I'm still trying to get my Chrome open and make sure that I am logging to the right pages. Oh, there we go. I had, you know what it was, was that slideshow was messing me up. Ah, uh, okay. And I've got too many tabs open, so let me get some of those closed. That is and the story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I am ready to go. I also, I heard someone mention that they were working on a church website. So one thing I'd like to do is start there <laughs> because I have um, a site that I developed for a church locally here on my island and they're not using it yet. They may never use it. <laughs> I think it might have been a little bit more than they were aiming at. It's, it's pretty advanced, but I thought it would be fun to talk about some of the fun things I did with it. So let's start there. I think it's a good place to start anyway, because it's very basic compared to some of my charter book looking stuff. So, okay, so now can everybody see what I've got and it's not too small? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. You can so go, I developed. Go bigger. Make it go bigger. Try to make it go bigger. So, did that work? And even though yes, this. That's better. Thank do you. you is it just me who sees these heads over everything or does everyone see that? We see everything. We see your tabs at the top and all. Okay. Most of those are just my, um, what I'm planning to show. So I'll close my email. Is you can maximize right? your browser tab or your, your browser. There. <clears throat> yeah, it is. Okay. So, I want to first just give you an idea of what what the site looks like and to note that not only is this a site that I built with just only the block editor, I also am only using core blocks. So this site is built without any um, block plugins or additional blocks. Everything in this site is just flat out the block editor. <clears throat> The cool thing about this site for the guy in the group who is working on a church site is I used WooCommerce and Twilio to build a little text to tithe app, which is pretty cool. 
So I can show you that maybe another time when we are in a, more of a developer talk, but just from like a basic tithing perspective, um, you can use uh, WooCommerce to accommodate that. So you can see that I've done that here. Give X and, actually uh, has that now too as a add-on for text to give with Twilio. Do they? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great way to do it, I think. And it's a, mm -hmm. it's a good thing to use WordPress, I think, um, particularly, I know a lot of churches are using like a platform, but you don't really need that. There's a lot of solutions right inside of WordPress. Okay, so I wanna show you how this theme works. It's uh, what I call a hybrid theme. So even though it's, um, you know, within the context of, I think this site is, I haven't looked at this site in forever. And if it's not, we're gonna make it in the context of 5.9 as we speak here. Yeah, so this is running 5.9. Um, and just to give you a perspective, I don't have any special plugins here. So I'm gonna show you like I have some very basic plugins here. Um, nothing that you would not use. It's other than my custom built text to tie that. There's, a, you know, I have name your price so that you can put in your tie by hand, if that makes any sense. Um, <clears throat> and there's really nothing else in here that would surprise you. So what's interesting about the hybrid theme concept is it actually uses the block mine, everything in here, and then everything down here is controlled in the theme, but everything between the header and the footer is completely, um, you know what? I should put my head, shouldn't I? How do I do that? Pin video. Check it out, now you can see my head and record that. Fancy. Okay, so everything between the footer down here and the header is all the block editor on every page. So there's nothing um, that you have to go into another place to find except in the news feed. And this theme actually has one sidebar here that shows up on all the products and all the new theme. So I'm gonna show you how that works. So if you use a custom theme that works like this one, you can change anything on the site right inside of the site, inside of WordPress. And so there's nothing that <clears throat> you kind of have to have a developer to do in terms of creativity. You can access all of that <clears throat> right through a combination of the two places, the block editor and the customizer. So this theme is called Kinnikeet Yacht Club and it's only available if you're on the charter boat bookings like pro thing, but I'm about to make a version of it called Community Sailing that'll go onto the repo. And that'll be a WooCommerce friendly theme. And I'm excited to release that as soon as I get it done, but nice. we shall see. Yeah, um, I think it'll be good, I hope. So I did this fancy thing where I said, okay, well, what do you want your colors to be? So if you have a branding uh, design that your designer has given you, um, you can match these colors to that design. And the customizer is great because you can see it happening in real time. So I changed the, you know, this red brand color to a green. And then I'm going to, let's say, let's pick something you know, different, I don't know, like a burgundy maybe. Um, and then those changes kind of go live automatically. And then I used um, the site identity to put in the logo here into the header. And um, then widgets control the footer. So you can see footer one, two, three, and four, and those just go across the page. So under links here, I think that's in footer four, but let's look at footer three. So once you're using WordPress 5.9, if, if there are widget areas that are accessible to you in the customizer, the block editor is live and working inside of those widget areas, which is really great because then you only really have to, um, 
the users of the website who are the content creators only have to learn the one way of doing things. So even though there are sort of two places to get to where you would add content, the customizer and the page editor, there's only the one thing that you have to learn how to do and that's how to use the, the block editor. So in here, um, you can <clears throat> create menus and as many menus as you create, they show up here. So these links are actually coming in from the primary menu. And then that's the only thing in that widget. Does anybody have a question about that navigation block? It's actually kind of cool. It's one of the cool new things that came in in 5.9. And then you, in the you, you, you completely lost me. Okay. Did I? Here, oh, let's here, go back to that. Here you've got. And the footer, well, first off, what are the, what's the blue circles with the pencils in it? So in the customizer, the blue circles are, um, those are like things that you can edit. So once you are on your website and you want to access the customizer, you can click this little paintbrush at the top and hit customize. And that's gonna open up the customizer. And the customizer has access to all of your widget areas. And then the block editor is live inside of those widget areas. So that's really a great way to use the block editor in areas of your site that you may not be accustomed to seeing it. So for my theme that I've built this Kinneke Yacht Club theme, which will, I hope, release in the next couple of months on the repo, but by a different name. Um, it has four footer areas and each of those are here in the widgets and also the post sidebar. So it may be easier for us to look at this just on the screen real estate that we have to see that what, in terms of the what you see is what you get. What you see here in the customizer is what you're getting here in the sidebar. Did that make it more clear what we're doing? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to see in the actual footer itself what was what okay. was um, uh, was what you call it? footer one, two, three, and four. Because what right. I see there, what I see there, it doesn't really look like your footer when you just show me the footer. Because it's wrapped. So I have uh, I'm using a flexbox model on those four columns. So there are four divs across the bottom of the footer and they're yeah. on a flex box wrap. So right, right now what you're seeing is one, two, three, and four. Did that make sense? Now it makes sense. That's, that's what got yep. me confused. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> yep, because it was wrapped. And actually, you know, I think it's a good question. What do these little pencils do? Ah, they just open up the block, I guess, of that widget because I've never used the pencils. I always go in this way. Um, but for instance, if I were to type logo here, it would actually, you see? So this is working in real time. And so that's kind of cool because I could go in here and say, um, this is HTML block, so that's not fancy. Let's not look at that one. Um, <clears throat> I did that because I couldn't get it to look the way I wanted, probably, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, either that or it didn't. Come in, let's see, let's go back to the next footer. Let's look at footer two and see if I wrote, if I use blocks. <clears throat> let's see what happens. Transform to a group. Will it work? Yeah, it kind of worked. So, um, Let's do this together. Let's fix that. Okay. So what happened is when that came in from what, from my originally from the widgets, it didn't come in as a block. So let's make it a block. So right now it says Sunday AM outdoor worship. Um, Sunday virtual <clears throat> midweek. That's an afternoon, an evening service, outdoor worship. 
So you see that what was up here in a custom HTML block is now down here in an actual list block. And <clears throat> it needs a title. So I can delete this one, remove legacy widget, and then I can get the blue um, button and add a heading. Or ship times. Then I can delete this one. Yeah. And publish I think that, that. I think that was youth, wasn't it? Titled before youth. Oh, I don't know. I made it up anyway. It's not their actual content because I don't write their content, so it doesn't really matter. This is still a development site, even though it's live on the internet. <clears throat> So we'll go back and what I want to show you now is this navigation block. So this is really cool. So <clears throat> the customizer has access to your menus, but it also has access to a navigation block now. So let's see if it's, um, is it? Meg, I got a question for you. I'm the guy yep. who's uh, building the, the, well, taking care of the church website. Um, okay. I just tried to access the website and it's it's telling me that it's in maintenance mode. Right. Are you live right it is. now? Yes, but I'm logged in as the admin. Okay, because I went to the site and it's telling me the account has been suspended. It, that would be accurate. <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah, oh, yeah that don't actually you, is accurate. Like I can that, turn that off. <laughs> no, I do know that. Um, I I will turn that off. Have you? If you guys haven't ever used it, that's a handy plugin. It's called WP Maintenance Mode, and it's quite useful um, for all kinds of things, particularly things like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here. Let's see. I'll deactivate that so you can look at it. How's that? Uh, what's your name? Steve. That's Steve. Steve, try it again. I'll try it. Okay. Yep, it came up correct yeah. now. Okay. So I'm going to go back into the customizer and get back into that footer, and hopefully we'll see the navigation block. So does everyone here, and please speak up and talk to me, because I, I despise talking to myself on, with everybody else on mute. It makes me nervous. Um, is everybody familiar with the customizer or has anyone used it before? It's quite handy if you haven't. I so I want you to, yeah, it's one of my favorite things. It's, mm -hmm. I know it's kind of old school versus the new full site editor thing, but for, I think in the meantime, until people sort of get up to speed with the full site editor and not even people get up to speed, you know, until the full site editor gets up to speed with itself, I think is a better way to say that. Mm -hmm. um, the customizer is a really great way to start implementing those workflows that make, uh, that emulate where we're going with the full site editor, but use it existing and stable tools. So I highly recommend that if you haven't started to use the customizer that you familiarize yourself with it, it's a really useful tool. So you have access to your menus here within the customizer and you can create a, a new menu, which I wanna do. And I'm gonna call it the footer menu. And I'm going to actually add fewer um, links. I'm gonna add a news link and a my profile link and um, the homepage link. Did my profile go in there or did it? I didn't click it. News. I'm going to put Fairhaven News, my profile, and then um, the shop page and publish that menu. Now, when I go back into the widgets and access the footer four, I can actually add a navigation menu and choose that footer menu. Yeah, so um, I think it was Trevor that was asking me before about this menu and it's in footer three, I think. I think that that's why we were getting confused. Yeah, so I'm gonna take this one out 
And let's go back to that. So now we have one, two, three. And I'm just gonna leave the three there. Um, this theme actually has a way to change the four widgets to three widgets. I won't do that now because it does require a little code snippet. Unless you guys wanna get into that. Michelle knows I'm dying to, <laughs> but I won't. I've been told to stay out of the code. All right, so <laughs> does anybody have any questions about how to use the widget, the block editor inside of the context of the um, customizer and widget? I have a quick question. I had to step away earlier in the presentation. I'm curious what theme you're using. Is that the generate press or what, what theme are you demonstrating? So the theme I'm demonstrating is actually called Kennecke Yacht Club and it's not available on the repo, I'm sorry to say, but um, within the next 30 to 40 days, there will be a theme on the repo called community, unless you steal my name, called community sailing, that will be the same theme. Okay, so great. The re yeah, and so you, it'll be free and you can use it. The reason that I haven't published Club is because it's a lot of code to maintain, like an obscene amount of code to maintain for a repository theme. And so it's, I right now, <clears throat> it's available to my premium charter book booking clients only, but because block themes are so much amazingly less code to maintain, I feel comfortable now that I can commit to the community to maintain that code. So <clears throat> I'm gonna take what I did, the concept of what I did inside of Kinnikeet Yacht Club and translate that into a block theme that will use the full site editor and support WooCommerce. And that I'm gonna, and, I, and then hopefully the themes people will approve me to put it out there on the repo. And so you could use that. So it's more of a coming soon than a available now. Okay, great. I just was, I missed earlier and I wasn't sure what theme you're using. So look, good, good luck with that. It looks great. Thanks. Okay. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to go back into the screen sharing and um, share, not my email, getting in trouble with my charter boat bookings people. Here we go. Okay. So I want to go into the homepage here. So this is really um, a super simple website. And the really, if you could walk away with any one thing tonight, I would love you to walk away with the idea that even though it's a WooCommerce website, and even though it's using this theme that you can't get at right now, you can soon, there's nothing fancy on this website. There's really, there's not a single paid plugin Right? Every plugin on there is either on the repository or I wrote it. And <clears throat> it uses, con this is contact form seven, right? So that's one of the most popular plugins in WordPress. And then all the other blocks are just core blocks. So the punchline of this presentation is really that Depending, particularly if you're in business, I love the idea that the combination of WordPress and WooCommerce, they're two, you know, actually open source free in like philosophy plug it, you know, platforms, but also in money. So when you're starting your business, it's nice to not have to spend too much capital right at the beginning. And it really gives everyone sort of a testing platform, if that makes sense. So like, if you have this great idea that you want to monetize, but you're not sure how much capital you have to invest, this is a great way to do it. And um, you don't have to go nuts having a whole bunch of fancy stuff. You know, um, I think that sometimes the best designs are really simple because they're understandable. So you can see that like, this is a really understandable website. You know, the architecture makes sense to people. You know, there's a news feed, there's the youth ministry, there's the missions, there's give online, which is the punchline for small churches, right? And then there's, you know, some information about them and when their worship times are. And hey, you know what? You wanna reach out, hit us up on a form. 
So let's go into this page and let's look at how we laid this home page out and how we could even augment it maybe a little bit more. So <clears throat> I, um, I know that this wonder, this is a wonderful, amazing church in Verdanthe and um, they have like a surf ministry where they go on the beach and worship <clears throat> during the summer. So I like the idea of us um, advertising that a little bit since we're going into spring. Um, so what I've done is I just entered my cursor here um, at the end of the page title headline and I've hit the enter button. I'm gonna show you around the block editor a little bit and the things that you could use if you wanted to, but first I just wanna show you the workflow that I use because I think that um, <clears throat> there's value in learning. I use the block editor all the time. In fact, um, one of the things I'm most interested in right now is just, I love to write, like I write a lot and I've, I've realized that the blog editor has become my favorite writing tool, which is kind of a problem <laughs> for me because I like to write for myself. So I write things that I don't want to share with anyone. I do that quite a lot. And I find myself writing things on my blog or on the internet that I would really just rather write for myself. <laughs> but because I, I want to use the block editor, <laughs> I feel compelled. So that's an interesting thing. I think once you get into the habit of using the block editor, you really fall in love with it. So I'm going to hit the um, forward slash button to pull up what the block editor is smart, right? It remembers the things that you like to use. So I tend to um, use a series of blocks that I find to be understandable and useful. And it's almost always the same ones. So one thing that I use a lot is columns because they're really mobile friendly, right? And <clears throat> so I just threw down three columns and I'm gonna go into the three columns and I'm gonna add a heading and say, um, right? And then, um, Right, then I'm gonna throw like an image, right? Stop me if I'm going too fast, um, please. Okay, so one thing that I've learned and um, I suggest that you guys really explore these tools when you're doing a layout like this, it really helps to use the um, aspect ratio tool. So I'm going to show you how I got to that again. So I put an image block in and then once you're in the image block, you have the tools that come up here. And I hit the crop button and from there I have this little like expander looking button. And that's the aspect ratio button and that button is your friend. So if you hit square on that button and apply. It'll help you keep all of your images on the same shape and the same size, which is really important when you're doing a layout like this. And then I'm gonna pull up a little bit of lorem ipsum because I don't feel like writing fake copy. <laughs> and grab that and then go back over to Pixies. There we go. I'm gonna throw in some, nope, that was not right, was it? What did I do? So now I'm gonna show you another feature of the block editor that I really love, and it's the list view. How many of you guys have used the list view? Holler out, me. Oh, me, I have. <laughs> And now you're going to use it too. So <laughs> click, click this little lines here, right? And oh my gosh, this is like eighth grade English. It's the most amazing tool. It's an outline 
from top of your page all the way down to the bottom of your page, not including the header and the footer, of every block on the page. And you can uh, click up and down. And I don't know if you can see that with everything we've got going on right now. I'm gonna close the settings. And I'm sorry, my head's there. It's really annoying. I'll try to move it. Let's see if I can get it. I'm having some issues with my um, stylus. So it's, it's not picking things up. I need a new tip on my stylus. I don't see your um, head. Oh, good. Okay, great. That's good. Good news. Okay. So if you watch what I'm doing, I'm clicked here on this paragraph. Do you see there's a blue box around it? When I hover over here, the paragraph gets a blue box around it. Watch what happens if I arrow up from here. Now I'm going up to the heading. So it went to the heading. So it runs from top to bottom and left to right. So as I go up, it's gonna go from outdoor worship to the columns. And then if I'm in the columns, then I can actually click here to column, right? And the heading within the column and the image. And now that I'm in there, I can make sure that when I get the plus sign, it goes into the column instead of not going into the column. So now I can click back on the paragraph that I wanted to be under that picture. And using these grabby dots, I can pull that into the column where I wanted it to be. Did that make sense? So the list view is very helpful when you get kind of lost on the page. The other indicators and tools that you have to help you keep track of where you are on the page <clears throat> are over here. So I keep this open all the time and I use this more than I use the list view. So I usually am in here and you can tell what block you are on by it, cha it changes as you scroll up or click through. So what I'm trying to get across is the fact that these blocks, particularly blocks like the group or the columns or the row, they act like nesting dolls, right? So the, the columns, plural, holds three columns, column. And inside of column, I have headline, image, paragraph. And actually underneath the paragraph, I'm gonna put buttons, z because you have to have buttons uh, before you can have a button. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, so I'm gonna throw down buttons, plural, but I'm only gonna add one button and I'm going to tell that button that I would like it to be centered. And, oh, this corner radius makes me crazy. Like I can't even tell you. So one of the things I'm going to be doing with my block theme is defaulting this to zero. So, um, okay, so I'm gonna say um, worship on the beach, right? Like a, call, a great call to action. And then for the link, I could type here um, and it'll actually Google my pages. And then, you know, I could click this worship services page or whatever page is the page that I wanted to do. And then in terms of user experience, you it's good to offer multiple pathways. So I also would like this photo to link to that page as well. And you have to click this curly arrow. If you don't, the link doesn't happen. And then you're like, what happened? Okay, one really amazing thing about the blog editor is that it's always saving in the background. But you can also hit Control S to like force a save. And then, oh, not like in Zoom. That's not at all what I wanted. Sorry. I must have been not inside of the block editor when I hit Control S. And so once you hit Control S, you'll get a save. And then you'll get the, the this thing is called like a snack bar, that little black thing that popped up is called a snack bar and it says view the page. So you can see the pages that the, the changes that you made. And I quite like this, but I think that maybe I should center 
this headline or I should maybe not center the button because they look a little off. You know what I mean? So um, I'm going to go back into the page. Am I boring y'all to tears? Tell me, is it too much, not enough? Well, I think it's really good to watch it happen, yeah. Very okay, good. all right. Okay, good. So I'm going to just keep on going and you guys stop me. One of the things that I think makes a lot of sense when you're designing content and you're thinking about what you want in a site, and particularly if you're thinking about um, conservative choices with regard to performance on your site. So it is my strong recommendation that if you're running WooCommerce and you intend to have many products, depending on the hosting plan that you have and where you're hosting your site, you may want to make conservative choices in other areas with regard to your plugins so that you're watching the performance of your site. It's one of the, everything I do, I do with WooCommerce. Like, I don't think I've ever built, it's kind of funny. Like, I'm not trying to give away the punchline of like, later on, I'm gonna, I, you know, I had, I met with someone who asked me um, the other day, like, what was my first experience with WordPress? And this is kind of funny because Michelle has asked me this before too in Coffee Talk. And I told her this whole like dramatic story about like this awful boss and I like went off on a tangent. But the thing that I never thought about was, the very first website I ever built with WooCommerce, with WordPress, was WooCommerce. And it went into production. <laughs> and that's pretty, pretty interesting because a lot of people like never build a site with WooCommerce or never think about the fact that they could do e-commerce. And I just always assumed maybe because I come from a retail background that like, if I'm going to the trouble of doing a website, I'm going to sell something. <laughs> like, I'm going to sell you something if I'm doing this sucker. So I just always, like it was just part of the standard group of plugins that I put on every website. And so because of that, I tend to be very conservative about what other plugins that I choose to put on my site. Now, that's not to say that there's a million plugins that conflict with WooCommerce. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that you you pick your battles and you choose the things that make sense for your site. And so for me, I always chose very lean and mean, like stick to the basics. But as you're making those choices, it's good to go around the internet and look at design patterns that you think communicate effectively. So one thing that I am a very big fan of is if you have a purpose-driven site, right? So I know we have someone in the group who has this church website. We have someone in the group who has a wood turning website. The sites are there for a reason. It's, and I, not that it couldn't be artful, but it's, it's more purposeful than artful, right? Like you're trying to do something with that website. And so it's good to go around the internet and, you know, in the fashion industry, we would call it like clips, like we would pull magazine pages out, and we would call them clips, and we would like surround ourselves with clips of things that we found to be good design, um, not just for beauty, but also for effectiveness. And that's the same thing that I do with the internet. And so one of the things that you'll see in this like simple little church website is that it follows design patterns that you see around the internet that the browser is accustomed to seeing, and those are user experience hints. It, it helps them understand what you're trying to communicate with fewer words and fewer images and less thought on your part. So anyway, that's my two cents. Like, I don't know if you wanted to get preached out about design patterns, but I did anyway. <laughs> so I wanna show you the group and how that works and why it's useful. So. If I click onto the headline and then the image and then the paragraph and then the button that I did, I can, it automatically, it, so what I did to get that to happen is I held down the control button and I clicked each one of those blocks. And now that I have them, I can get, get to the three dots and actually hit duplicate. And now I have those twice, but they're still in the group. And now I have this handlebar thing and I can pull it into the next column. 
So I don't have to replicate that pattern and make sure it comes up exactly right. I can just do that for all the three columns. And then I've got my very common design pattern, right? You're gonna see this all over the internet and your uh, browsers are gonna understand it. They're gonna say, oh, these are the main three sections of their site, right? It's like that um, visual secondary menu, right? Um, people are accustomed to that and they almost expect it now, right? So we'll go ahead and say outdoor worship and we'll say indoor worship. You'll change the picture to choose a photo that, um, and I'm just gonna click replace and open media library and mm, see, I don't have a photo of indoor worship. Ah, but this will do the trick, won't it? We'll just pretend. We'll hit select, and then I'm going to choose uh, replace open media library and a photo of the outdoor worship area and hit select. And then what did I do wrong or what do I need to do? Somebody answer this question so that I know that I taught you something tonight. I need to use that fancy aspect ratio tool, right? Because this one came in and it's not lining up and that's going to keep me up tonight. I would be all night long. I'd be like, JB, like, go to sleep. And I'd be like, no, I can't go to sleep because those blocks don't line up, right? Because those kind of things drive me crazy, right? So I'd hit, my, my husband's name is Jay. Um, I'd hit this and then get the aspect ratio and choose square. And if you actually, you can pull this around like this, which is kind of cool. And I mean, like really cool. Can you imagine what it took us to do that like five years ago? But the middle line, like I wouldn't the middle I wouldn't line. know PHP if it, I could have done that five years ago like I wouldn't be a developer today so I don't know if that's a if that's an is that is that an advocacy for the block editor or like a reason that the block <laughs> editor shouldn't exist I don't know <laughs> like I can't decide if that's a good thing or a bad thing but but your middle image a is a different size than the other two how come because I didn't do it Look at that sucker. Yeah. It's almost square, but it's not it's exactly right. square. So now Thank I you can for sleep at night that. too. Now, <laughs> now you're going to be able to sleep too. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, okay. well, yeah. so then me, me too. Gonna... I, yeah, that was really bothering me. I, I was getting an ulcer over it. Right? Thank you. Okay, so why does it keep doing that? It's because I have, so, I guess it's because Zoom is open when I hit Control oh, yeah, S. Yeah. Like, I'm, if you're not if you're not clicked onto the right thing, then yeah. um, it'll like, I think I can hit just escape. You have to actually be in the block editor and have a block open for it to hit save. And then you get the view page snack bar and the snack bar takes you back. Um, one thing that's really interesting about um, having been what I would consider to be an advanced WordPress user um, before the block editor, and after the block editor is before the block editor, I found the admin bar up here to be kind of an annoyance. I never used it except to get back and forth to the dashboard. But now I do almost all of my content creation inside of the context of a pager, the pager post editor. And I only pretty much use this button unless I'm having to work with products and product settings or um, global WooCommerce settings. So it's just an interesting way that uh, to watch the evolution of WordPress um, through the years. But so this is like a really, that image still is not the right size. <laughs> Look at that, y'all. Do you see that? We got to fix that. Okay, so let's, let's troubleshoot that a little bit. My kids are yelling at each other upstairs and my husband like went off to the marina or something. I was like, I've got a presentation at 6.30. He's like, I've got a boat sinking at the marina. <laughs> so I think y'all lost, just so you know. Uh, yeah, the boat sinking versus my presentation. I guess I'm uh, going to be the one dealing with the yelling kids. As long as Who's Bunny's this y'all person? Gonna, as long as Bunny's not going to get to the markers again like last time. Oh my God, I don't know what's going on up there. Like, honestly, it could be just about anything. Um, Y'all, 
is a word they use in that other part of the country for the other people in the room <laughs> to answer your question. <laughs> okay, so I need to figure out why this image isn't showing up the same size as the others. And I think it has to do with the size of the original image. Like this one, might look how small it is. Um, even though it's full size, it's not big enough to be 350. And I bet these are coming in. Look how much bigger they are. So our choices are to take this to medium and take this to medium, which is the 300. And then I can go in and take this one. Whoopsie daisies. You have to give it a second until it gets, um, yeah. I'll put this one on medium. And then if we update, it should be that they're all the same. And I'm going to go ahead and send, I think I need to justify these left. I don't like them centered. I think it looks a little weird. Don't y'all agree? So I'm going to go ahead and put them on the left. I think if I put the headline centered, maybe that would work. But I'm not a fan of centered, so I'm just going to leave it left. Sometimes I like to make them full width just to be different. I know, right? Y'all, excuse my nerd glasses, but I'm, I'm aging a bit. My eyes are, and I, it really helps. So, so I'll say sorry. something real Southern. Oh, honey, you're fine. <laughs> Am I fine? You're fine. But they're also crooked. Like, what's up with that? Can't I at least get straight ones? Wait, is that what I'm supposed to go for? <laughs> Actually, it's not that it's not the glasses, it's the hair. So there's a whole backstory to that. But I got I was trying to grow them out this winter and I gave up and I cut on myself. So <laughs> but if I, I could put the glasses more crooked and then the bangs would look straight, or I don't know. There's there's no good solution. <clears throat> if y'all can figure that one out. With the block editor, that would be much more favorable. Yeah, we should use the full width one. What do y'all think? Y'all want to try the full width one? It looks pretty good, though. What yeah, do you yeah. think if we were to put, like, a little bit of a background, maybe, so that there might be, like, a background around this whole section to cue the reader into the fact that, like, they're moving into, like, a little bit different. I think that's what a great we, idea. We, Can you... Can you also show us like with the images and stuff, they, the new cool like duo tone and stuff that they really- I can show you that on one of my um, development sites. I I don't think I have the do, do I have the duo tone tool if I'm not using a theme.json? If you're using um, a newer version of WordPress, you do. Well then- You should. Yeah. try it. Yeah. Okay, let's try it with- um, okay, so I'm going to show you how to do the background first, and mm -hmm. then we'll get into that, because I, I am not as familiar with Duotone as I should be, but I thought that it would be, oh, well, let's do it. Let's do it to it. It's right yeah. there. So what would look good with, I didn't change the theme colors yet on this site, so since I don't have a black. Theme.json. Oh, that looks cool and beachy, right? I think we should use it. I love it. Okay. <laughs> this one. That's so cool. Okay. Good idea, Michelle. Okay. okay. So, yeah, totally. Okay. I want to show you those because this is one of my favorite tricks that I love to do is I love to add a cover and put a like really subtle background and then make it okay I'm going too fast I'm going too fast let me delete this sucker and I'll show you I mean I will narrate through the steps of what I just did okay so I'm going to hit enter and go up here and hit forward slash and then I'm going to choose the cover block and then instead of putting a picture in the cover block I'm going to choose just like a little, I call it Omis White. It's E E E E E E E hex code. It's like the light is gray. And then when you first put a cover block down, it's going to put you inside of a paragraph inside of the cover block. See how up here it says paragraph? 
you, you, you need to get arrow up from there to get into the cover itself. See, now we're in cover. And once you're in there, then you can change the alignment from, right now it's wide width and it needs to be full width. So we're gonna change it to full width and then go in here to the paragraph and hit the forward slash again. And instead of a paragraph, I'm gonna choose my columns and put my three columns. And now I can actually take all of this. Well, I think I can actually move the whole columns without, yeah. So I can just move these columns right up into that cover. How cool is that, right? Very. So this is a this is a very common design pattern that you're gonna see all over the internet right now. One thing that I will tell you about the block editor is that you kind of need to know when you need which tool to do the thing you need to do. So I've learned if you put columns down and you don't put anything inside the column, it's kind of hard to delete them from like the normal area. It's easier to delete them from the list view. So I'm gonna go into here and hit remove those columns that I put in that I didn't need. And then I'm gonna hit update. <clears throat> and then let's go look at that. Check it out. How stinking cool is that? Because now what we have is we have what used to be really hard to do because we would have to like have sections or like try to figure out a way to like get that background difference. But now we have it, right? Isn't that cool, right? Pretty cool stuff. And so we just created this whole section. Now, I imagine that this is because I've got an error in my theme that I didn't properly support the columns inside of the cover and put the right padding on it. So I would have to go in and as the theme developer, that would be like a customer service call to your theme developer. Um, whoever writes your theme would need to support that better than I supported it in this theme. <laughs> Yeah, but this is the way that you would do that. And it does look really cool. And I don't know why I don't have the padding there. I probably made some kind of stupid CSS decision. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty cool thing to do. What else would you like to see with that? I wanna show you like the cover block is your friend, right? So these, um, that's gonna drive me crazy that that's not aligned. And Michelle told me not to write code. So I'm gonna not write the code. So I'm gonna have to figure out another way of doing that. Um, well, Meg, why is the text wider than the image in the, in the columns? It looks like the text, is, you got a wider space for the, for the text column. Because we had to make the images smaller because the one image that we brought in was not big enough. Did that make sense? So it's, it's actually these images are constrained to a certain size of 300 by 300 instead of just being full width where they would fill up the space. We made them 300 by 300 because this particular image was only 300. It was only 317 by 317. So it's probably something that the pastor shared with me on social media or something that I copied out and put in here. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. But that is an issue. Like I have that issue all the time. I want to show you guys something on how to seal. I think it's on how to sealing or it's in here. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm switching gears now um, to, I'm trying to get into the site that has, um, Okay, wait, I want to actually punctuate. I don't know what the timing is for this presentation because Michelle wouldn't give me a time. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop sharing here before I move on to the next sort of phase of the talk that I thought we would cover and do a little Q and A now. And then if we still have time, I was gonna open up one of my development sites that does use a block theme and show some of those full site editing features. Just to give a little bit of a preview, um, I don't know if anyone in the group has uh, yet started to use the full site editor in production, but I, I think for me right now, I think it's more of a 
Um, we had a, you know, um, an introduction to full site editing last month. Okay, so you don't need that, want that right now. Right. Okay, so does anybody um, have any questions so far for what we've done? Or is there any part of the block editor or blocks that you wanted to talk about that I haven't talked about? I have a question about the photos. Mm -hmm. Could you, I, I, would you kind of go back and just highlight what the differences or the advantages of the new change in that aspect ratio, et cetera, compared to previous versions? Previous versions of the block editor? Of the block editor, like, right. Like you, you seem to be highlighting that, that those were new features and I was I wasn't very familiar with them. Okay, I don't think that the aspect ratio tool is a new feature. It's just one of my favorite features. Okay. So <clears throat> I don't think anything changed with it in 5.9 that I know of. The duotone feature is a new feature. So I'm going to go back to that one and show you that one as well and also show you another context that you can use it. So I'm going to open up my screen share. Well, maybe, we'll create a new. Maybe I could ask you about the aspect ratio. Was it, did it, um, did it override the image settings or like, was it, was it, was it like a, like an auto format of the, like an auto crop tool? Is that kind of like what it was like? Right. So <clears throat> it actually will change the image itself okay. as well. So it's actually a really cool tool. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go into the dashboard. Meg, I've got a, another question that kind of follows on with that. So let's, let me let's, write down notes. <laughs> let's say, you know, we, you know, we all take photos with our phone and they're gigantic photos nowadays. Yeah, they are. And, and you want to bring it into your site, and I see you have schmush and whatever. What's the actual process that you go through to bring an image in? You know, I what I found is in the in my shop, photo mm -hmm. editing takes as much time, if not yeah. most of the time, for bringing a mm -hmm. product into into the store. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. So, what's well, what's the process okay, but in all fairness. And you're Trevor, right? I'm Jim. I'm the wood turner. Jim. The wood turner Jim. Okay. So Steve is the church website. Jim Trevor, is the wood Trevor turner. has the nasty, the, the, the nasty dream. Oh, I don't want to do his website. Okay. And Jim has the X-rated website or R-rated website with bad words no, or something. That's, that's um, Trevor. That's Trevor. <laughs> That's Trevor. Jim, oh my gosh, I can't get it straight. Okay. Anyway, so here's the thing, and I didn't mean to interrupt you and be mean, but when you have a store, the visual merchandising of your store is like the most important thing that you have. And if you have a physical store, it's also the big pain in the ass thing that you have to do. And big, you know, retailers have learned how to do that with a science. And I think that one thing that, and this is, this is feedback that I'm, I'm always meditating on. And it's, it is one of my dreams to go back into the retail industry, but to address visual merchandising and storytelling on e-commerce in a way that I think very few stores are currently nailing. Um, so that image taking, Jim, even though it's kind of a pain in the butt, it's also like the most important thing that you're doing, right? Because no, I, it's yeah, the, I, I agree with that. I just want to know what it is, what, what is the yeah. process that you go through to bring a, <laughs> bring a very large image right. into uh, so that it's, you know, well, it's so there's, and, and WordPress. Exactly. So there's a technical answer and then there's what happens in real life. Right. So like 
if I could have everything in the whole world that I wanted, every image would go through some kind of preparation process where they're all like set to a certain compression, like in Photoshop or something, so that we're getting like high quality, but you know, low bites. But what I do in production, because <clears throat> for instance, let's look at this site over here. I have it open. So Hatter Sailing is a not-for-profit community sailing organization. I spoke with you guys about this is the model that I'm going to be publishing the community sailing theme on the repo. Um, and the idea is that once I publish that on the retail, that on the re on the WordPress repository, that um, youth sailing organizations worldwide can have a template to start with um, to benefit their programs. But one thing that um, you will find with community sailing programs is there are a gazillion images and the parents take like crazy amounts of images and then they send them over to the club, right? And then they want to see them online. So <clears throat> if you look at Hatters, and actually the way I have this built, there's some like custom plugins and like fancy stuff on this site. Um, the parents can actually text the photos to the website and it, it like automatically uploads them to, so to your point, it's not always practical to have some kind of like involved workflow. So um, I don't think that there's a right or a wrong answer to your question, but the way that I do it in production is I use a combination of Smush and the aspect cropping tool because that helps me limit the size of the images that actually go on the site. So I think you, you answered your own question before I answered it, but I use Smush because it helps to compress the images programmatically on the fly. And I think it's a great plugin. Um, I don't say that a lot, a lot of plugins because I have a disorder of not using plugins that I didn't write. <laughs> it's like not healthy. It's not healthy at all. But um, anyway, and so I use Smush and then I tend to go in there and crop everything so that I'm not bringing in an image that's like 3000 pixels wide. So, so you're um, doing you're doing the cropping in the aspect racial tool. Right. So <clears throat> but I just for reference, I wanted to show you like how many and every one of these was just uploaded straight from the camera and then smush compressed it. And then when I use them, I put them uh, into the page and I crop them. And uh, I've never used smushes or other settings and whatnot that you can that you have to set in there as to like the maximum size or how do you do that? I mean, like WooCommerce, right. WooCommerce and, and my site, the, the store wants an image, the square image, I think it's 500 by 500 pixels. So I mean, I take a picture of one of my products and then bring it into, um, um, oh God, what's the, um, it's it's the open source uh, photo editing software. Um, GIMP. GIMP, thank you. Um, and crop it and then I resize it to 500 by 500 and then I, you know rename it and all that other stuff and, and then I upload them. That's a lot of work. It is a lot of work and you don't have to do all that. That's what I'm saying is like, it's totally impractical for me because it's, this is a, a volunteer run organization. <clears throat> Actually, woo, jazz hands. Um, we have hired a full-time sailing coach. <laughs> so the volunteer run organization had enough of volunteer running the sailing program last year. So, <laughs> but so, to answer your question, the workflow that I use so that I don't have to be the one who does every single image for the website is I install Smush. I like it. Um, they have a premium version, but they also have a repository plugin that is free um, money wise and free uh, in the licensing. So I think it's, you know, it's a WordPress plugin. So it's an open source piece of software. <clears throat> and actually the settings for Smush are kind of automatic. I'm not saying that I'm I can't say that I'm an expert on this topic necessarily, although I have common sense. Um, I think that someone from the company WP 
This one would probably love to give you a lot more detailed talk on that, but I can show you what I do is I literally like install the plugin and like accept the free version and take the little walk through here. Preset configurations are here. Awesome. Let's go. I'll take whatever they tell me to take because here's my perspective on it. And so they have this whole like basic configuration thing and I just hit apply. So that might not be rocket science and it might not be like the best thing ever, but here's what it is. It's a whole lot better than nothing. And because I'm not the one who's actually like creating every page or uploading every image, it it's my safety net for when other people in the club who aren't necessarily more advanced users or thinking about performance when they're building a page, it, it kind of has your back. That's the way I look at Smush. I look at Smush as it has my back when I don't follow necessarily like image best practice, if that makes any sense. Um, so once I set that up and I know that it's actually compressing the images on the way in. So what Smoosh does is as they're being uploaded, it actually compresses them on the way in and creates different sizes of the images, um, which WordPress does that anyway, but Smoosh compresses each one of those and optimizes the, the, um, the size of the image through the compression. Then when I'm in a product, okay, now, okay, part two of that is you ask specifically for Word for WooCommerce. So right now WooCommerce does still have that um, <clears throat> square thing, right? On if you add a new page, um, oh, this is not the development site. I better close that. Um, let me open this up on my local host. Otherwise, I'm going to be adding a page to the sailing club that, oh, I'm writing a piece of software on there that clearly isn't going so well. <laughs> no, actually, it is. I just I've got a little error on it that I was <laughs> troubleshooting. Hmm, let me open this one. Um, Hopefully, I can get into this one. Let's see. So, Meg, are you developing? Um, uh, you're developing with React or with PHP? Yeah, yeah, okay. um, yeah. Okay. So it just depends, and all of that, and co-mingled and separated. And one thing that's I think a little bit unique about the way I like to do that compared to some other folks in the community is I don't think decoupling coupling has to be an all or nothing. So almost everything that I do, I will utilize React to pull certain features out that I know that my users need to do from their phones and it needs to be really mobile friendly and and the WordPress app doesn't necessarily support what they're doing in an efficient or perfect way. So I will pull out a set of features into a standalone React app and use the WordPress REST API to communicate back and forth um, via the WordPress application passwords that came in in 5.7. So I tend to use WordPress as a coupled entity. Um, and to your point, um, Jim, you know, the new, I don't know if anyone has been using the new WooCommerce dashboard, but it's really quite nice. And so um, I'm going to have to pull up these live sites, but my husband's site is like, it's not quite the same as like me adding pages to like the sailing site, you know, like my husband can just whatevs, you know, if I add a weird page on his site, he doesn't have to worry about it, but I don't want to do that to the sailing club. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> if you're creating a new page and you want to, the great thing about the block editor and how it's working with WooCommerce and the Woo blocks is that we have more flexibility to create um, sort of shopping pages that aren't the shop or product category pages that aren't the taxonomy page, right? So um, 
I kind of went on my soapbox a couple minutes ago about visual merchandising and I totally like Jim like stepped on the hot button and he didn't even know it. Michelle, you didn't warn him ahead of time or anything, but, um, <laughs> and I didn't mean to jump all over you. Like it's really, it's just a personal pet peeve because, um, I enjoy visual merchandising and I think that there's not enough product storytelling going on. There's a whole lot of like utility shopping, but there's not a lot of experience building. And so <clears throat> I don't often get to buy clothes on, <laughs> but when I do, I want you to tell me a story, you know? Um, so anyway, uh, let's talk about, uh, creating a page that is not a category page, a product category page, not a product taxonomy page, but you just want to tell a story, right? So I want to tell a story about bow parts, right? My husband sells bow parts. Like, let's tell a story about some bow parts, right? It's not like a special page. It's not going to happen programmatically. Like I literally want to design a page around the bow parts. So I'm going to go into the media library and see what I have that would indicate like, you know, Oh, actually, I should, he's been asking me to write him a page about windsurfing sales, so <laughs> two for one. It's a twofer. Okay. Uh, right. Look at me with my bad gimmicky SEO practices. <laughs> Sorry, hmm. so funny. <laughs> but I mean it, <laughs> but actually I do mean it. There are windsurfing sales for sale on Hatteras Island. <clears throat> and I'd like you to buy them for my husband because <laughs> they're all over my yard, <laughs> like all over that. my yard. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna actually use that cover blog because I don't, I don't, I just, I feel like it should have a cover block at the top of every page. I have like a cover block disorder. Um, does everybody else feel that way? Like, I don't know what to put at the top of the page if I don't put like a really cool image. Like I feel like it should be there. So I don't the know. images just really attract your eyes. I know, right? Like if you don't have one and honestly, like I think sometimes like if it gets a little like, um, the simplest, Sorry. most understandable um, practices get the best results. So like if you do um, conversion optimization, like I spent years working in marketing doing conversion optimization, like three, four years, and it's all the same stuff. Like you need to put a hero image at the top. And you know, I mean, there's like a pattern that works. You might as well follow it. I don't know. So. That's, that's what I think people understand it. Um, so yeah. And I think this site has, um, no, it doesn't, but I built this really cool form. Um, I, I, this theme actually takes the page title out of the page content so that you can control it with your blocks. So that's why I had to go and put it in there. But the point of what I was trying to do is answer your questions about the image aspect ratio thing. So um, when you put the image in there, and I'm going to actually put, um, I'm going to put four images. And usually I like odd numbers, but in this case, I think um, four is a good number. So I'm going to put columns. Instead of just putting four images, I'm going to use the columns because I think it's it's better. And I love this tool. So I don't know if you guys have used this, but you can add a column here and they come in even. So you just don't have to like always have the number figured out ahead of time, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to go back into all these wind serving sales that Jay and if you need to buy a windsurfing sale, <laughs> guess where you can find them? We know where to go. <laughs> you know where to go, right? Oh, goodness. Uh, apparently, it's a thing. Like, I'm not trying to, you know, push my husband's business or anything. But I guess, like, not very many people are repairing sales anymore. And so 
people send us sales from like all over the East Coast. They're like, well, you can have it if you'll fix it and sell it to somebody. And so after it just, it adds up, like all of a sudden we have all these sales all over our shop. Start making tote bags out of them. People will buy that oh, yeah. up so fast. They do. There's that one brand that that's their stick, right? Oh. And it's cool. I've wanted one for so long, right? But they use um, Dacron sales mostly. These these would be interesting, but okay. So let's talk about the aspect ratio. What do you guys think? I don't know. I think uh, for this, I don't think square is the answer. So we've got this one, four by three. A portrait. Ooh, what about you think maybe nine by 16? What do you think? No. We think three by four is probably the answer, right? And when you do that, so to answer the other question about the size of the image, these images all came in full size from my husband's smartphone. So they're really large. See how long that took? Now, if you go in here and choose a smaller um, image, even if you have it set to, um, if you have it set to wide width, it should fill up the space. So someone asked that before, like why wasn't the image on the church site filling up the space? And it's because I didn't choose wide width. Wide width is supposed to fill up the space, but not fill up the page. Full width fills up the, the whole screen area and wide width is supposed to fill up its parent container, if that makes any sense. So in this case, the parent container is the column. So it should fill up the column width. And then I would do that to each of them so that I'm certain that they come in the right size. So three by four is what I want. And I'm going to hit apply and then I'm going to change it to medium so that it's not so giant. And also it does help for mobile view because I've noticed that sometimes these images look really huge on phones. Like it, it's weird. Um, Okay, well, I don't have to do everyone right. Like it's kind of um, taking, it's kind of a bore. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit publish. <clears throat> but what I wanted to show was how to use the woo blocks. So <clears throat> I'm gonna add, um, hand pick products or Products by category is the one I really wanted because I told Jay to put all these in there by category. So we'll see if he did that or not. We he probably 20, did. 20 minutes left until the end of our time together. So I just want to make sure that um, we're answering anybody else's questions too. Okay, cool. And I'll just throw some in there and we'll see. But I love this products by category block because it's, um, and then I'll do question and answer because that's the most fun part anyway. And this should not be in there. I wanted it to be out of the columns. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna delete that. And I'm trying to get in, yeah, there. But it, it, you can pull in your category. I use products by category a lot and I use, um, Oh, uh, he never did it. So there's that. We'll just pull in outer bank ceiling. So you can see that um, you can pull in any kind of product into the product category. And then you're not like, you can custom design and tell a story around these. Um, <clears throat> oh, I didn't do that right, did I? So. Phillips Boatworks runs a custom theme called Boatworks that's not the same as Kinnikeet Yacht Club and the headline thing doesn't um, actually work on Boatworks because he likes his headlines and I, you know, don't argue with the hubby, whatever he wants, I don't care. 
Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to just quickly, Michelle, and you guys can ask, ask me questions while I'm doing this, but I just want to make sure you guys see why that block didn't do what we wanted it to do. It's because I didn't choose full width. Gotcha. So I chose, it was, it defaults to wide width, I think, and I didn't choose full width and I should have, so. So does anybody have questions while Mike finishes that up about the block editor, about the, what we've been doing with images um, or anything else that, that's on your mind? Because we usually entertain any questions at the end too. So um, anything that you got going on, unmute so, and ask away. So I have a question, this is Trevor. Um, so I was playing with the cover while you were talking and I did put one up on my website but it it seems like it went in as square and i've got a hmm. lot of extra space at the top and bottom is there a way to adjust that within the editor or do i have to do css for that it's the image i bet you money and i know i don't know i i don't i guess you can't probably share it here but um if you if you use an image and it's not, okay, so make sure you choose full width, go back into it and look at that button that I, um, okay, so, so the same correction that I just made, it might be in wide width and not full width, because if you're in wide width, or if you're in one of the other widths, um, if the image isn't wide enough to fill the wide width, it won't right. fill it. But if you use full width, it will fill it, even okay. if it comes in grainy. So, so I don't know if I was using the cover incorrectly but i actually put some woocommerce blocks in there so they have one that where you can do uh you know pick by category like you just did mm -hmm. and i put one of those in there and it's got two i basically have some holiday selections i mm -hmm. put it in there it's got two images two two products and it leaves a nice you know it's, it's a nice very mm -hmm. square block but it leaves a lot of room up at the top and bottom. And I don't know if there's, I, I can't seem to see anything else in it that might be doing that, but I just don't know. I know a lot of times you can adjust the- uh, Well, the there's story. the spacer block. Have you guys used the spacer block? I have not used the a spacer block. The spacer block is really handy. So um, you have to, and I don't want to say this like it's going to come off wrong, but if you're using a theme that doesn't think ahead about how block users want to use their blocks. Okay. Right. So if the theme is adding padding on top of the WooCommerce box, the spacer block isn't going to help you as much. What I did with my theme is I knew the spacer block was existed. And so my theme adds no padding anywhere and it resets all the padding and all the margins to zero so okay. that the content creator can control the padding with the spacer block inside of the editor. So when I put, <clears throat> when you saw on the church site, I had that hero image and then I used the gray color uh -huh. to create the next section down in the page. The reason that came in and looked right is because I was thinking ahead that my users were going to be using the block editor in this way when I when I wrote the CSS of the theme. But the beautiful thing about block themes is that I'm not going to have to do all that, I don't think. And I'm not going to know 100% until I get into it. But keep, um, you know, keep up with me and Michelle will keep up with me. And when I get that theme ready, I will be back to show it to you guys because it it is going to be my goal with that theme to build something that empowers the content creator to use the block editor in the best way. Okay. So um, it is a twofold conversation. The block editor can't sh really shine unless you choose a theme that was built to allow the block editor to shine, if that okay. makes sense. Does, do you know, does Storefront from WooCommerce? <clears throat> I've never personally used Storefront. I have in, I suggested that my sister use it for something once, but I don't think she ever really followed through on that. Um, okay. So I, I don't know. 
Okay. I think it's a beautiful theme though. Like when I look at it in the repo, I'm always like really tempted to use it, even though I have that disorder about only using stuff I write. Um, storefronts, one of those things that I actually have thought about using and I've tried to use a couple of times, but I don't know the answer specifically because I'm not a storefront experienced storefront user, but I'm sure I could get you the answer and back to you. Okay. Well, thank you. But do you know how to use your um, uh, Chrome like inspector? Yes. And I okay. can't see, I can't see anything specific when I put, when I put the mouse over it, it doesn't tell me anything other than that it's a cover, uh, cover block. So I, I guess I can share it here and it's a little profane, but not too much. Uh, let's see. Nope, I guess I can't put it up behind me. I'll let somebody else ask a question. I don't I can know make to... you a host if you want, and you can share your screen. Oh, OK. Might want to stop the recording, though. <laughs> OK, I will stop the recording. It's, it's not that bad. It's not, but 